Marconi's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart. So, uh, this week, we are building up. We are building up, and for those watching, this release is Friday, so this weekend, right now, you can get tickets to see Mark Norman at the Houston Improv. It's improvtx.com slash Houston. Uh, Mark Norman, if you have not heard of him, you are completely missing out. Mark Norman is uh, from Louisiana. Couldn't be a more interesting guy. He is arguably, well, he's, I mean, Jerry Seinfeld has openly said that he is his favorite comedian is Mark Norman. Been on Rogan a few times. Mark Norman couldn't be a nicer guy. Um, Check out his show this weekend. I am going to be there this weekend, tomorrow, Saturday, uh, for the early show at 7, 730, 730. Uh, but yeah, check out your tickets at improvtx.com slash Houston and check it out. And next week, next week, no promises. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But Rogan, Joe Rogan will be in town. He will not do my show. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way he's doing my show, but I'm going to try. I'm going to ask. So we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so uh, what I did this week is we uh, – Houston is going through this really tumultuous time and, and kind of acclimating to coronavirus and, and protests and uh, in the heart of, of downtown Houston, uh, Edo, 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 is uh, the secret group the secret group we've talked about this many times there's two comedy clubs in houston that are uh paving the way for comedy in houston and that is of course um the houston improv and uh the secret group and i sit down today with stephen brandow and zahed devji uh we talk about everything that's happening, the acclimation to the current changes, and how we're getting back to the normal times, and doing so while tasting through a few unique things. I figured if I'm going to be sitting down with a couple of comedians, we might as well be tasting a few things that are interesting. So this week, we sit down with a bottle of 1940s chamomile elixir from World War II, and 1930s cherry brandy. Both of these if you're not used to drinking straight, are going to affect uh, a reaction or instigate a reaction within someone, especially a comedian. So Zahed and Stephen, I thought it'd be great to sit them down. Uh, Stephen's actually a member of the Houston Bourbon Society, and and, and uh, that bar has one of the best whiskey selections, better than anybody. When it comes to, to comedy clubs, uh, what they're doing in terms of the whiskey selection is fantastic. So uh, I thought it'd be fun to sit down and, and just kind of shoot the shit. Whiskey Neat, we have one sponsor besides our great friends over at Balconies. And just so you guys know, tomorrow is our last release of our Rumble Cask Reserve series with Balconies at Specs. Uh, there's four area locations. Check out the Facebook page. But it is a tequila barrel, fully matured for more than six years in an ex-tequila barrel. Uh, it is the oldest thing that has ever been released from Balconies, the oldest barrel to ever be released. And it is a cast strength tequila aged, matured, rumble cask reserved, made from Mission Figs, Turbinado Sugar, and honey, Texas wildflower honey. Um, Whiskey Need is also supported by the Inspired Spirits at Glass Rev Imports and Amroot Distilleries. Yes, they are back. Amroot crafts one of the most award-winning Indian single malts to the exact same standards of scotch. Amroot Fusion also received a double gold blind and scored a jaw-dropping 96 points by the judges at the Proof Awards. Amroot Single Malt Whiskey is widely available across America and can be found everywhere in Texas. Go out and get a bottle today. Uh, one last thing, we our samples from uh, the Indian distillery from Amroot will be here shortly. We will taste them on air. I'm trying to find the right guest for that. 
and uh, we will be doing the first ever Texas release available statewide. Uh, without further ado, Zahed Devji and Stephen Brandau from The Secret Group in Houston, Texas. Cheers. Owner, founder of The Secret Group, general manager. Yeah. Stephen yeah, Brandau, how are you things. doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. I'll shake your hand. Right. I've got some hand sanitizer over here. Uh, what's going on, buddy? I'm glad you can come on. Um, man, I mean, we're open. So yeah, we've been open for like a month. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, why well, know you guys actually closed out. for a little bit in the middle there for? Yeah, we closed. Some, I mean, because not everybody, the, not riots, but the the. Oh, we closed during the protests on on the the Tuesday that George Floyd's family was going to walk uh, from Discovery Green to City Hall. So we closed um, in part because we we're so close to the protest, but also we didn't want to detract from it or anything like that. Sure. And, and you also, if I'm not mistaken, I think you guys were also offering water for the protest. Yeah, yeah. yeah we just, put uh, we put a bunch of uh, cases of water out, and uh, uh, myself, Zaid, and Andrew, and uh, a number of our friends all walked out on the protest as well. Um, didn't stick around for the tear gas, but you know, was there tear gas in Houston? Uh, my understanding is there was there was some. I so I, I that, so that was the weekend that uh, Brendan Schaub and Brian Callum were here. We were supposed to have lunch at Truth Barbecue Saturday at two. Me and Brandon were set to go. They actually showed up early, and I left my house, tried to come into Houston from south of Houston, Clear Lake, and. Uh, uh, the roads were basically at a standstill, and we saw news reports. They were saying, "Don't come into Houston." Yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't hear reports of tear gas, but I assumed that it was it got out of hand. Yeah. Well, I think the first the first few hours were were good and peaceful. There were sixty thousand people who showed up, Jesus. and uh, I mean, it was hot and it was uh, very very crowded. Um, pretty much everybody's wearing masks though, which is sure. you know good considering. Um, and then uh, march to city hall, and then. <clears throat> march back and on the march back that's when like there were people antagonizing some of the police officers um at one point i saw like some people run over to where some cops were and then and then uh police on horses come up and kind of you know bolster them from the back and stuff like that and then uh i was like okay i'll go i'll go home and then or go back to the bar went back to the bar and then uh my fiance actually was like hey you the news is showing this this inter this standoff at the intersection literally out the window across the street from the bar and there was just a line of people or whatever but i think i think it wasn't until maybe an hour later that i think people who had decided they were going to stay at discovery green the police declared an unlawful protest and then started clearing them out um and that was when Jesus. that was when there was a little bit more uh tumult or whatever and yeah it's you a, had some tumultuous time yeah the uh it was a bit more incendiary during yeah. that time yeah. uh there's a lot of angry rightly angry people so for sure i uh, totally get it man uh, I, I couldn't even get into Houston, so. Uh, but I'm glad you guys are open, and if that doesn't need a drink, I, I definitely think it. I think that's yeah, enough reason I mean, to pour something. So, um, I know you're a bit of a whiskey guy. I know that there was a bit of uh, speaking of tumultuous behavior between you and Youngblood. Uh, oh, a guy whose name sounds like uh, Jeffrey Epstein was trying to think of a cool vampire name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was he was a little bit jealous that you got on. He got on the show. You were a little bit jealous that he got on. the Yeah. Show first. Well, no, I was. Well, in part because uh, I mean, Andrew drinks whiskey, but he doesn't. I, I'm the one who orders everything at the bar, so I'm the one who picks what. And granted, I t also totally cheat by just looking at what's popular in the Facebook group. Sure. So, sure. Uh, uh, Houston Bourbon Society, yeah, 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 shout out. Yeah, hundred percent. So, uh, well, I've talked about that. I think uh, he just it, drinks Jack, and that's it. That so the well, he he actually opened up that interview, uh, chugging, uh, shooting a, a, a bottle of uh, I think it was a hundred and thirty proof pear brandy. Like he immediately was like, I guess we're, are we supposed to shoot this? What's uh, happening? <laughs> but uh, I've talked about it. I think there's there's two. Houston used to be known for a great comedy scene. And it's it seems to be making a bit of a comeback. Yeah, uh, there are two clubs in Houston that I know of that are worth your worth its weight in gold, and that's uh, the Houston Improv and of course an Edo, the Secret Group. Right. Uh, you guys have been really, I think, for quite some time, tearing it up. Yeah. So I mean, we opened uh, when we opened. There was the Improv, uh, and then there was the Joe Joint Comedy Showcase, and those are two. Uh, Joe Joint's still there. The one off of Forty Five. Joe Joint is now closed. It's just closed. It closed. because of Corona. Uh, no, pre-corona. Okay. Um, also, Zod just called me. So sure. I don't know. If he's, he's outside? He's well, might tell, be. Him, tell him to come in. You want to grab him look. quick? Don't cross the camera. There you go. Nice. So, this is not actually whiskey. 
it's made from figs and honey and turbinado sugar. This is our, and then it was finished in a, or it was aged in an Olorosa sherry That's barrel. That's delicious. So it's absolutely fantastic, That's right? It's really good. <laughs> yeah, so this is the first time uh, we, we convinced Balconies to let uh, us do a selection of their rumble casks and they let us do it and that is just off the charts that's, phenomenal that's really good so it's also a bit hot too 61 percent abv so it's gonna it's gonna light you up yeah the sweetness is uh i mean covers it pretty well i don't know I've, fantastic yeah yeah no that's sugar delicious. no added anything it's just like whiskey distillation is purification so what you're tasting is just empty calories right really no carbs is that how that works yeah i always assume that there had to be like no. something to it no, there's an old saying, something about clear alcohols are better for you, but that's complete bullshit. Really? Yeah, so essentially... Uh, so, I mean, the, you get the the calories from the alcohol. That's it. But there's no... No fat, no carbs, no sodium. But no, the sugar. I assume nope. that there was sugar. No sugar. No added sugar. Uh, so, it's just distillation is pure. So, so, all those keto bros, they can totally do this. Yes, yeah. ketos, ketos, whiskey's keto. Wow, this tastes... Uh, and this, is, this isn't whiskey, It's not though. technically whiskey, but oh. it is... It's distilled... Whiskey, rum, anything that doesn't have added flavors to it. Distillation is purification. Wow. It's a, it's a great little tagline we should put on a shirt. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's just empty calories. That's really good. So, it's great for weight loss. Yeah, that's, which, that's how I lose weight. Yeah, I just yeah. fucking get Meal drunk. Meal replacement. Um... What were we talking about? Um, oh, the club though, the secret group. We yeah, open, yeah, yeah. we open up, and we open to not be a traditional comedy club, um, but to be a more. Would you say alt comedy, or is that a bit of a cliche? Um, no. So alt, alt comedy specifically is like defined as alternative <laughs> so venues. <funny>. So <laughs> it's okay. We're filming. Come on in. Come on in, Zion. Hey, well, you're sitting right here. All right. Good cool. seeing you, buddy. You too. No man. worries. No you worries. Get some I, hair I, of the dog in here. I, I, oh, I, that's got to have all of taking the painkillers that blew my back out. I heard. That's what's, Making me sleep. I heard you oh, guys. Uh, that's what's making you sleep. I thought it was just your normal sleep schedule. That combined with pain pills. Oh, let's get him a microphone. <laughs> yeah. I uh, sorry. Oh, oh yeah. I uh, I heard that uh, you guys tied one on last night. There's a couple of great guys in town. I guess the Matthew Broussard guys in town. Broussard's in town. Uh, that's who I blew my back out with. Uh, hmm? I was having coffee. <laughs> yeah. I was having I... coffee with them. Sure. And then my back blew out just talking. Sure. I try, I'm trying making it funny at Rudyard's yesterday. Then it, then no one laughed. But I was like, oh, my body's like too brittle for light conversation. We were talking before, that's exactly we, what happened. before we started. Uh, actually, oh. for those wanting to know, Zion is a local comedian for Houston. Uh, Devji, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I always I literally thought you were going to say dirty immigrant. No. no. <laughs> I was sorry to laugh. But uh, we, so uh, I, I needed to ask this question. Yeah. Were you there for open mic the other night? I I don't go to our open mics right okay, now just because okay. I don't trust uh, filthy comics. So we we I was there. I know you guys did trash flavor trash. Yeah, you know, I'm doing of, shows though. Yeah, a couple of rowdy folks in the crowd yeah. uh, didn't care for some of the jokes, and it basically set a tone. And I actually I've gone up several it got times. Racial. It did, but it got racial. A, a black comic went up, and, and I'm sorry about that. We don't we usually book. <laughs> But a black comic went up and basically said, uh, he's, he was setting up a joke that basically said that the cops are hitting white people too. Yeah. And uh, the crowd was was not accepting so crazy. this premise. So crazy that they hated. And it, it. when when I I did three minutes and it was the worst three minutes. That's oh, ever. you went yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. You went so, up. Yeah, yeah. What? I've, I've gone up a couple times and it was it was fine. I've I've loved it. It's been great. Uh -huh. You know, it's been stories that have to do with being a dad. You know, uh, like fifteen thousand other comics, and. Uh, I'm not a comic, but uh, it would just it just went so bad. Yeah, they were they got weird at the end. It, that was just, and I, I wondered when I got off stage, I was so embarrassed. I didn't look to see who watched it that I knew. Mm -hmm. So I wondered this whole time. I was like, I wonder if so. I saw it. I really hope. I see literally that. left as soon as that show was over because it got so strange at the end that I was like, I, this last part's really bothering me. Like, yep. I, like I, don't, I didn't like I make a bunch of race jokes and you know I think they're funny and fun yeah. but as soon as it becomes like serious sure. and the crowd's just like I don't like it because of the so you're like what? It's a what different tone. But especially right now out of all, sure. the, out of all the time. Now's the time to joke about it. And now's, now's the time when you're offended as a white guy it's like the fucking dumbest thing you could that's the dumbest oh, yeah. opinion you could have. Sorry. So, um, the it, it went well for everything up to that point. I had mm -hmm. a great time. I love going to the secret room. We were talking about that but right before you got here. But yeah. the, we were talking about the two places in Houston to see comedy is the improv and, of course, the secret group. Yeah. 
and the secret group is something that uh, it, did you answer that question? Is 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 alt a weird thing to call? Uh, so like traditional alt, alt comedy just means it's it is about where the comedy is, which is kind of weird because you go, oh, they're an alt comic, and that literally just means that they mm-hmm. they perform at places other than clubs. Oh, they sure. perform so it would be at a bar or at a music venue or something like that. Yeah. So in that sense, we kind of are an alt comedy venue because we don't have a two drink minimum and tables and bar food and whatever else. And we do other stuff. We do like music. We do music. We uh, do all sorts different of different types of nightlife. Sure. You know, dance nights when dancing Comedy's is allowed. A huge part of that, but it's not like the only part. Uh, are you on painkillers? Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to drink? <laughs> uh, I am going to hold off right now because I don't want to throw up on your set. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I've, I have been, I have been mixing Sure, and uh, it's you gotta get the most out of your. It's not you know, come on. <laughs> so, so it, hold off for now. But we, I did bring a couple of things uh, that oh. were little pieces of history. So this oh. is from the 1930s, and this oh. is from 1950s, and they're not necessarily. They actually come with painkillers in them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, they're actually prescription painkillers. Yeah, back then they were all a, they were all a prescription. Uh, uh, but they're, <laughs> they're not necessarily good. <laughs> Are you so, describing my comedy? So, <laughs> this is so, literally my bio. They're basically yeah. alt bottles, and uh, yeah. They're, they're, so I figured it'd be great to taste you guys on it and to give you a piece because I mean, literally 1940s. This is World War II, and one of these is pure gas. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, th- they're also cool. like super borderline racist. I mean, if you look yeah. at that, something about that it actually feels says like, not for you. <laughs> it's fucking weird. This this feels. Uh, it's got a very. I actually this is a had a single bourbon whites only. Yeah, uh, I actually had a, a rum called. El Negrita and it had a very much like that in the 1930s the way that they would cart- cartoonize cart- the way they, they would yeah. Yeah, you know. picturalize yeah. black people was very drastic uh, stereotypical I- images uh, and the rum even though it's from the 1950s mm-hmm. feels super racist uh, <laughs> so yeah I figured I would I would taste you you, could, you <laughs> can taste the oppression <laughs> and the barrel yeah 1950s that's <laughs> This bottle is amazing. I was oh yeah, what, covered what? in mold. There's mold. It's so on the cool, outside. man. I mean, it's amazing to think. It it's for me. It's like you know, like as you get older, you're like when you were young, you're like, why is my dad in a World War II? And then you get older, and you're like, why are we not all into World War? Like, <laughs> like you appreciate history more as you get older, and you're not sure. Like, and I look at this in my head, I was like, this bottle was like it was around <laughs> during the depression. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Real time capsules. It's I mean, the average rate of domestic abuse during that time period <laughs> is absolute. It's a hundred percent. So it's it's a real piece of history. That's awesome, man. Can I, can I bother you guys for another water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like 40 more. Yeah, you can more. have my bottle. <laughs> 40 more waters. So uh, I'll get there. I'll get back. Thank there you. There you go. I also took took a... Hair of the dog. I, li- I literally... Uh, this is second. I have a, I have a Ziploc bag full of pain pills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shouldn't, we I shouldn't be saying that. No, no, it's okay. Uh, the police won't see this till later. They're not going to pull you over till next week. <laughs> okay. I'm actually feeling better. I slept for the first time. But I was telling you, I have a Ziploc bag of pain pills. Oh, I, really? Yeah, I don't even... I'm just breaking random things in half. I'm like, hope this works. Hopefully it works. Oh, so they're Health not they're care. not prescribed. They are, but the yeah, doctor... Yeah, let's not incriminate you. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they're they're like, prescribed yeah. to someone. To somebody. Uh, I got a little... To my uh, dog. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, I, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm breaking them in half and like trying it out and being like, let's see how this one works. But it's, have, I, you go, have you gone to see a doctor? Nah, I don't believe in them. <laughs> no, I haven't. I, but in this situation, I feel like, you know, what's gonna, I'm going to go in and they're going to go, uh, your, your back is bad. That'll be $60. I'm sure. Like, Fuck, I fucking knew that. Like, it's such a clear, I already know what the problem is. Reminds yeah. me like, that Louis C.K. joke. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's, you know. That Louis C.K. joke that uh, your ankle's just bad now. Like, oh, there's no, I was thinking about that. Yeah, there's just no, There's that's it. Yeah. All yeah. right. That'll he, be $120. Yeah, yeah, they told him that he has to stretch. And he's yeah. like, when? And they're like, you just do that now. You just, <laughs> you just do that now. How and long have you been doing you. comedy? Uh, I'm on my seventh year, so six six seventh years. Year? It was six years in February, and I'm on my seventh year right now. I uh, so uh, I've always been a big fan of comedy. I haven't been super involved in the local scene, but the very first time I, I went to go see any comedy here besides the Improv, first time I went to the to to the Secret Group, uh, you guys were doing Trash Flavor Trash. I got to meet cool. Andrew and you. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't know Andrew was part owner. And uh, you guys kept calling me out for wearing plaid and, and being ah. the stereotypical hipster, you know? <laughs> and and there's this instinct, even though I know better. Yeah. I know you're not supposed to respond. 
don't heckle. Yeah. Just take it and go with the flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in my head, I was like coming up with comebacks. <laughs> like I should have said this. I should have said that. And Andrew, to me at the time, I think he had a nose ring. Yeah. 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 Forgot about I, that. I was like, oh, you look like gay Russell Crowe. Like just like uh, the yeah. perfect, you know. And uh, but I, 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 that was the first night I went up on stage. But I've been back a million times since. I've we were talk, started talking about this before, but. There are a bunch of dive bars in the city. I think Houston's sitting on something like 10,000 permanent premises. Wow. Uh, bars and that. restaurants. The Houston area is over 10,000 basically bars, restaurants, anyone that has an alcohol license. Mm-hmm. And tons of dive bars. No dive bar. No, not that you are, but no, <laughs> no like secret place Google, to go. Google Maps says yeah. dive bar, I think. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it has like four different things, but I think it says dive bar. Has Bloody. the selection that your bar does. In terms uh, of in terms of alcohol, alcohol, I that's mean, incredible that's just selection. The because uh, of you. Well, I'm I'm a really easy pushover sell. You I've know? seen it happen. The I, reps come in, they go, hey, and I go, yeah, I've I'll s- try it, and they go, well, <laughs> will you buy it? And I say, I guess. Yeah, I've <laughs> seen it happen. <laughs> <laughs> and they're they're so they're so slick because they'll booze you up. They go, you should try some of this, try some of this, sure. and then, but then you're like six shots in, and you're like, all right, fuck you, give me one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the? And I literally won't drink with you guys because I know how I know how it. <laughs> It goes with those reps because they're they're sneaky sneaky peeps. Those guys. Well, just wait until you, I ask you at the end of the show it's for not, something. Oh That's yeah, like, like oh man. Form. Well, hey, we're we're one in, so. But they're uh, you're one in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm four in, and I don't know how many pills Holy out of that bag you had. I've uh, had I've had half of one, uh, and a couple of grapes. You just twisted wrong. You guys were just. I literally was doing this. I was like, anyways, and then I just went. Mah! Just like a shooting pain. I've never had happen. Up your back. Just like mid conversation went out. Do you're thirty three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thirty three now. Yeah. Oh, that means I'm not too far away from my own back. Dude, injury. it was. I have sneezed and broke a rib. I've had COVID, COVID for like fourteen years. It's crazy. <laughs> you had it before. It was cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this body's uh body's not good. It's so, getting worse by uh, age. We could start backwards. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sweeten up your mouth a little bit. Ooh, what's that? Lube you up. You a big fan of port, Sherry? You ever had them? Uh, probably, but I can't think as to whether or not I even liked it. Uh, I need to get my... This is such a better way to drink. I wish everybody... I feel like you should have a monocle and a steam engine. This is like wine, but a little bit higher in strength, but not as strong, okay. as, not as, strong as whiskey. So you can taste it without mm-hmm. worrying about it, but it basically tastes like Christmas raisins. Wow, it's what a phrase. Christmas raisins. And you can buy like they, they have some that are like from the early 1900s, late 1800s for about a thousand dollars. I feel like I want to cook with this. Oh, it's fantastic! Yeah, yeah. So I probably should. I'd like want to eat a cake that's like made of this. Is that a weird thing to say? That is. A, I, why did I say that? No, it's not. It's not a weird thing to say. So but don't you want like a like a chocolate cake? With chocolate this? cake or Christmas like yeah. uh, like a fruit cake? Like, you yeah. could reduce this and drizzle it over something. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. like a balsamic yeah. vinegar dr- drizzle. Yeah. Yeah. This is fantastic, and that's this is really good. It smells really good. Not yeah. even that old. 2007. Uh. All right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, this is way too easy to drink. Yeah, you can really put that back. You don't wow, have, that's great. You don't Holy to, shithole. You don't have to necessarily chug it. Can I get one of those Kleenexes? Oh, yeah, that's like but, yeah, well, uh, I don't know super why. easy to drink. <laughs> Immediately. Is this, is, this, is this easy to find? Uh, so you can. there's a few places in Houston. Uh, you, have a, you guys have Class B with Specs, right? Probably. You order from Specs? I yeah. order everything from so, Specs, yeah. Specs has uh, some vintage ports that you can get. And really, as long as it's a, got some age on it, yeah. don't just buy it because it says port. Okay. There's a lot of bad port out there. But if it's got a vintage statement on that, like uh, two th- I've got some 2000, 2005, some ni- I got a bottle of 1977, so it's like 40, do the math, 40 something years old. Yeah. Uh, unbelievably fantastic. And wow. cheap. It was like 100 bucks. Nice. Yeah, for hundred bucks for a forty-five-year-old bottle of port is, is just insane. Is, is there any profit there? Why are they doing that? Mm. <clears throat> I'll tell you what it is. Uh, it's not that expensive to make fifty years ago. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. not a lot of people are buying it. So oh, a lot of people. It's aren't a fantastic spirit it. that a lot of people don't know about because gotcha. it's uh, what's popular right now. White Claw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody's buying. No, no twenty-year-old buying vintage port. <laughs> what's popular right now? Police brutality. <laughs> <laughs> Systematic, re- I try to be like that. Systematic cool. oppression. Okay. So, all right, so that's the port. This is, uh, in a, back in the day, they used to make basically mm. booze out of anything. This is made out of chamomile. 
And no from, way! You can make from, booze out of chamomile. It's from Italy. Holy shit! It's, it's a, got a little floating. It's an elixir. It. Yeah, that's the cork that broke before. This is the replacement cork. Remember, I've got back. That bottle's course. amazing. Yeah, it's 19, like it's like a thick glass. 1940s. So this was before yeah. we were 48 states, right? <clears> Something <throat> like that. 48 states. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and here, let me go ahead and. Are we not supposed to be cursing on this thing? You can cur- curse. They'll clean it up for radio. All right. And all I'm going right. to give you a smaller pour because this is really interesting. And interesting, it does not mean good. Oh. oh. That's, that's, I, like, I like how you described that. Interesting does oh. not mean good. Interesting is interesting. <laughs> oh, I wish you wow. could tell people that. It's I a, wish you could tell comedians like that. like effervescent. Yeah, how was my stand-up? Oh. Was, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting, interesting really does not mean good is such a good quote. This was medicinal. Right. Really? This was this was medicinal. Yeah. This is smells like it. Something really. Oh my god! <laughs> it smells like someone liquefied a, like an old shirt. Oh. It smells like mothballs. Maybe. Yeah. It has like a like, <laughs> it has like a like an old. It smells closet. like minty to me. I don't. Yeah. yeah. It's got some mint to it. So a little bit of that that chamomile. It smells like uh, old tea. Like if you had some yes. tea, some chamomile tea. All right. I don't think it's that bad. Do I, do I... <laughs> don't don't chug it. Keep it in the mouth. Don't shoot it straight back. Tons of syrup, tons of sugar. That tastes like a lot of um, sugar. Tons of sweetness. a lot of honey. Yeah, there's, there's some, some honey in there. Honey? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some honey in there. I think it's that this, bad. This literally it's not horrible. But it's, it's interesting. You know how bouillon cubes, like for chicken stock, are like condensed chicken stock. This tastes like that, but for, for tea. tea. Yeah. Like if you took like a cup of tea, put that a little is, bit, that is bit a of that in a fantastic explanation. You know, it tastes like it's a good a re- actually reduction of a glass of chamomile yes. tea. It it tastes better than it smells. Yeah, but I think because it for me it smells like an old person. But that's what you think of when you think of tea. <laughs> it's just yeah, that's what, you're into. <laughs> what hey, you're so into. Yeah, you, what you're into. You're you're single. Yeah, 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 and I live with my parents, so you know. How how long is that? Great. How's that working in the comedy world? I've, I I plan on talking to Mark Norman about that a little bit this Saturday. Uh-huh. So uh, he is, and if you're available, I'd love mm-hmm. for you to come on. So it'll be you and Mark on the show. Yeah, I got nothing on my calendar for weeks. Yeah, except some anything. another back injury. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he uh, he's talked about that the the i the the acclimation of mm-hmm. the night lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, in relationships, have mm-hmm. you experienced that at all? I uh, I am kind of in this like sort of uh, the way the way that I'm the way that I kind of tell people is like it's it's hard because comedy is the thing that you're pursuing right now or you know like for, for myself it's like the thing I'm I'm all in on you're building and, yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, that means that right right now like you know I am still at home and stuff and those but it's it's one of those things where I don't I just don't feel that there's room for I don't personally feel like there's room for anything else so I don't want to get in a relationship because I, th- I think in the oh, past Oh, so you avoid it altogether. Mhm. Yeah. No, no, like, nobody wants to date him. Sure. Nobody. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. That's a, that's a, that's he's a lot of words. I am yeah, yeah, yeah. a comedy incel. Uh <laughs> <laughs> But uh uh yeah, I I mean, there's been times where, you know, a couple of girls have been like, you know, would you and I'm like, no. I where, never where'd you happen. meet them? In the, within the club or outside the club? Um I feel like there's more within, of a risk within. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's more of a risk outside the club. Like if they're mm. not involved in your life at all, totally, then they're not going to get it at all. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but if they are, if you meet them within the club, they're probably mm. not the type you want them to date anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> it, it was funny. I was telling this to one of our friends yesterday, uh, but my my mom like impressed me because she goes, she goes, whatever happened to that girl? Like she was asking about this girl. She goes, you know, you got to get married sooner. <laughs> like, and I was like, yeah. And she goes, and then she stopped and she was like. Don't actually do that. You're on the path to comedy, and you have to stay on that. She checked and, herself. Oh, wow. And I was like, yo, what the wow. <laughs> like, I, How progressive. Yeah, like yeah. the self-awareness kicked in where she was like, what you're doing is great, and it's going to take some more time, and you really got to stick to it. And I was like, all right, lady, wow. good. Good thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Can I borrow some money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the time to slip it in. <laughs> <laughs> a, but, uh, yeah, I'm impressed with this guy. He's had a... Oh, he's had a had a, a girl for uh, three years now. Have you uh, done this thing? Four. four. Holy, holy crap. Yeah, we've been together for four years. Yeah. How long has the secret group been there? Three four. years. Four. No, it'd be four in July. It'll be four. No, October. The se- October will be will have been open four years. Yeah, she yeah, she uh she met me when uh I was living in the comedy flop house over on Commerce that was oh, yeah, disgusting I, and had bed bugs and uh oh, Yeah, I'm God. it's amazing that she uh stuck around. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that, that I don't know if you. Of course, it's it's a disgusting shithole of a place. <laughs> that uh, I lived, I lived there with 
<clears throat> it's it's it was it was like a thousand dollars a month. It was so bad. A thousand dollars a month, and it and it's like a like a. Uh, what do you call it, a loft? <laughs> they that literally they had, like, had built a, a back. There's a back room. My room had no windows. They literally had nice a guy on the in. couch. We had a two g- couch guys. G- <laughs> we had, had two, two couch, couch guys. guys. <laughs> so it was well, it was a thousand dollars a month, and there were there were like kind of kind of three rooms. There was like split a split between everybody or well, sp- split between everybody. So it was it was cheap it was to the start worst off. Thing I've ever seen when it was three of us. Yeah. But then we got two couch guys. So then there were remember five half, men. Remember in Half Bake how Stephen Wright is like the guy on the couch? Sure. They had two of those. We had two couch guys. They had legitimately there had two people. There was the front couch people. guy and then the other front couch, couch guy. guy. And then we had, and then my room is in the way back. And then there's a guy above me. And then there's a guy in the loft space. <laughs> and we had one bathroom. Uh, and it was really fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> These are adults. <laughs> really yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. gross. Uh, How and, I, and I get made fun of for living I mean, with my parents. Is, I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm 32, so at the time, I guess I was fucking 28, 20. I, I probably lived there from 25 to 28. Yeah. And, wow. And uh, it was gross. It was really gross. <laughs> but I lived I lived in China before that, so I was used to like a low. Hell yeah! Let's get racist. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Who's about to say? I don't know. Man. <laughs> the places over there sometimes are not. A lot of clean. pandemics in your apartment. What? <laughs> <laughs> Justin is. A, what's funny is that like people rotated after. Like Scotty came in. Scotty, yeah, very funny comedian. And, and you know, I'm not sure if you've seen Scotty. I think Peterson. I think Tony still does. Pedro Pedro lives on. He l- did live there. Yeah, but now he lives on the other. Our side. buddy, our buddy Scotty has this uh, food truck called That's It Barbecue. Uh, find him shout out yeah uh, sometimes sometimes offers food so, yeah. I, he was gonna do some food <laughs> so like last weekend and then and i was like hey i'm gonna buy it you said you were gonna have it on uber eats and he's like ah you know i had this corporate thing so uh <laughs> i'm just like you know what's funny is you were a trash last week he was supposed to be on the uh 8 p.m show and uh, he messaged me at 3 p.m. and he goes, uh, two things you shouldn't do, uh, just let you know, is uh, don't cook barbecue in 90 degree heat for someone, some guy that wants you to mail it to San Antonio. The other thing you shouldn't do is don't take two hits of ass that he found in an old drawer. <laughs> I was like, are you doing both of those things right now? <laughs> Did and he so, come to the show? No, that's the thing. Yeah. And so like, he was on the 8 p.m. show and he's supposed to be there. And uh, of course, we're all like, where's Scotty? And we're like, well, you know, it's whatever. It doesn't you matter. You can't sure. count on him. The show is already like too long. Sure. And I get a message uh, I get a message from him going, uh, when's my set on trash? <laughs> and it's like, that's at 1030 and you're not on that show. And he goes, well, I, I could be there. And I'm like, if you come, I'll throw you up. Uh, when are you going to be here? And he goes, well, I can't let you know that. He literally was like, I can't give you a confirm on what I'll be. He showed up at well, midnight. At least, he, at least he confirmed that he can't give you a, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he showed up at midnight with brisket. And, he's like, <laughs> and he goes, happy birthday, big dog. Did I miss the show? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Whatever happened to the vegan guy? The, the guy that was cooking oh, uh, vegan turns out burgers? He was, a, he was a creep. <laughs> He's also super annoying. It was really annoying. <laughs> it was really it, odd, but it was, uh, but, it was, it was but really the annoying. vegan black bean burger thing yeah. is like not too bad, nah. you know. Yeah, no, it, they were good burgers, and he was selling them for really cheap. Uh, you know why he was selling them for really cheap? And, and this is what should have told us that he that he was a uh, creep. They're made from babies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no animals in them. <laughs> he goes. Uh, he goes. No, I, I'm selling them for this cheap because I want to spread the message of veganism. Which, like, when your intention is that good, I'm like something's up. Okay. You know what I mean. Like, sure. I want you to be a vegan who's also capitalistic. Sure. <laughs> like, ba- I need balance, sure. you know? Like, make me healthier, but be kind of shitty. But be also a human. Yeah. Right? If you're but not if, a human, that's like when someone's like, I don't drink. Religious reasons? No, I just don't drink. Oh, you're a horrible you're person. Horrible person. I don't like, want anything to do with you. Have a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a reason. <laughs> so, what, so what happened? He just went away? Just, yeah, he just, I think he creeped out some he girls. He creeped out some girls after... Uh, I can't the, remember the specifics. Yeah. It was one of those things where, like... some. Here's the thing with Seeker Group, and, and, and like it, it's a new thing for, for me, and obviously for, for all of the team, but like uh, you people, especially like when you're a comic and stuff, and it's a comics run bar and a comics run venue, is that it's not one of those things where it's like you don't know who owns it, who you can talk to. So a lot of times when shitty things happen at the club, they whatever, come directly the, to you. Directly. Guys. And we're, sure. I feel like a lot of the times we are like ankle deep in someone's mess. <laughs> sure. And I'm not saying like, I'm not, I'm not like knocking them like they should do that. Sure. That is the response. But it's like, it's a new thing for us to be like, it's also, we're always, we have to do something about yeah, it. Yeah. It's, and that's it's, a brand it's new. also difficult because whereas 
other businesses like, oh, you're a bar or whatever, but we're not just a bar. We're like a community of comics. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I have to police this community of comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. just like a yeah. bar owner. You're would, obligated. Why would a bar owner be concerned with, you know, something shitty somebody did to somebody else? Like, just tell them to leave and move and on. Like, yeah, whatever. But it's like, oh, no. Hey, wait. I. But like I didn't mean it that way. It it was it was interpreted wrong. Can I can I still perform at your mics? And it's like, I don't know. Uh, you gotta like, make that call. Yeah. We, so then we live in a gray, <laughs> very gray space. Do, the, we had a recent issue within HBS where we had a a uh, I hate everyone's joking about how bad the Zoom comedy era has been because of Corona. Mm-hmm. But uh, we had a Zoom drink night, and. That's kind of nice. When you're in a bar, mm-hmm. you somewhat have to mitigate how much you drink and behave. When you're at your home in front of a camera, oh, absolutely blasted. You get nice. act- absolutely blasted. Yeah. We had a guy that made a comment that was Oof. Uh, technically. What did he say? What's his full name? What's his address? <laughs> the, technically. <laughs> how do we find him and make sure he never works ever again? Uh, let's ruin in the guy. Any yeah. career. Yeah. Of technically, all time. it's sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we had to like fully look at it and like, what do we do here? What's the assessment? How long has this guy been involved? Are you weighing like? Can you sexually harass someone remotely? Like, I'm sure. A- Ooh, good question. Yeah, that, that was the thing that I always wanted to be sexual harassment. Find out tonight. <laughs> sexual <laughs> harassment is like something in a workplace. Sure, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. N- but if it's not a workplace, then it's well, I think it's, it's not it's illegal. In social environment now, what if what if his whole defense is like I virtually harassed her? <laughs> yeah, you're like that's yeah, so yeah. what. <laughs> 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 well, I don't, that's uh, his defense. Sexual harassment is defined, and and uh, within a social environment, you have to be careful what you allow. To, I mean, even within the club, you have to be careful well, yeah. with what uh, what's allowed right, because right. then it's going to come in your lap. Well, so sure. We had to like evaluate. It's coming in things. your lap is actually how I got. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got my last sexual I, harassment. I just not okay. <laughs> I think uh, we'll edit that out for radio. Uh, no, no, yeah. edit that for out. radio. Uh, that'll be out. Uh, it'll, 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 podcast, it'll oh, stay. Okay, it'll okay. Podcast, it'll stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're listening to this on the radio, Listen go check out iTunes. the podcast. Yeah. You just missed a good one. It's <laughs> good stuff. The radio is just a bunch of hard cuts of skipping. Like you never hear the punchline of any setup or anything. Oh, oh, god. Yeah. So no, I get it. I mean, I, I've, I, uh, last year. Mm-hmm. I, Eh, probably earlier this year, I had heard some things that were happening in the community, and I, I, f- I felt for you guys because, mm-hmm. as someone who loves comedy so much that you're willing to invest your livelihood into creating a safe environment, and dude, let's, I'm giving you credit here. Over the past, I'm giving Houston credit here. Over the past year, the amount of surprise, incredible things that have happened. I mean, between Chappelle just showing up randomly over and over again. Uh, I mean, Houston has just seen this like great, well-deserved opportunity of credit when it comes to the scene. And you guys are just like, yeah, I'd love to start a comedy club, not knowing that you'd be obligated or inclined to like make actual judgment calls of like, yeah, should we deal was, with this? Yeah. Should we deal with that? How do we deal with this? That is uh, a new thing. It's a it's a new thing. So I give you, my hats off to you. Can't be hard. And, back and the, to maintain back a day, relationship. Back in the day, they didn't give a shit about that. All the comedians were men, and, and, <laughs> and this was your this was your prescription. As it should be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be like, oh, oh, did you see that? that Rick harassed another uh, woman. Well, she's not a comic. So. Classic. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, <let's, laughs> that was his punchline. So, actually, it was just. Uh, I went back and look. I've I have I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with folks over the fact that. Comedy is an art form that takes practice, right? When mm-hmm. you first start drawing faces, you're not as good as you are 10 years into drawing faces. Totally. Same thing is with comedy. People tell me that uh, this comedian's not that great of a comedian. There's been some people who've shit not, I won't say any particular names, but they've been nah, say the names. guest on the show. Uh, that wow. it's, a, it's a progress, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. progress. So, um, Damn, I got to look at this fucking... <laughs> we've, had, we've had quite like, a few. Come on, who is it? Uh, but in 2014, uh-huh. uh, Mark Norman's first special was called Still Got It, as if he had already released things before and he still got it. But yeah. no, that was his first special. It was uh-huh. 30 years old. It is f- fucking phenomenal. Yeah. It is really, really good. And I think that's the joke. I think that joke is on that first album. Yeah. Um, he, he basically tells a joke that and we weren't recording when it happened, mm-hmm. but um, Hair of the Dog is also, it's the problem, but also the solution. Mm-hmm. I wish more things were, were that way. 
get a girl pregnant, have sex again, not pregnant anymore. Like mm-hmm. uh, Mark Norman is legitimately so funny. Such a funny so idea. So freaking good. Yeah. I'm excited that you're opening for him. I'm, ex- I'm we're going to be there Saturday. We'll uh Hell yeah. Uh, I get I get scared cuz I get compared to him a lot and it always <laughs> it always bothers me. Why does it bother you? Beca- because for me uh it's uh, I was telling this to somebody last night but uh I it's always I always do like a lot of George from Seinfeld. Sure. It's like ah uh, yeah, 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 and like yeah. there'll be times where like great Norman. I was like, no, no, not at all. Right, it's not well, what's happening. Norman's a bit, and he's been compared a bit Seinfeldy, right? The way his delivery yeah. is kind of that, and 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 the thing is, I think that's his actual. That's, what, that's it, his it, it, actual literally, personality. I'm telling you, we were in Hawaii during the uh, for this festival in February. Me, Andrew, Andrew Youngblood is hosting on the Friday, so all all three of us were in Hawaii for like a couple of days, and uh, we went out to. Uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. And nice. Never Mickey. heard of it. Funniest yeah. part of Hawaii. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the tagline for Pearl Harbor. It's like 9 11, never forget. Pearl Harbor, never heard of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, what was that? But he he has legitimately made us laugh <laughs> so much throughout it. He does this weird thing where he makes cat noises randomly. Uh, like, young like, one? <laughs> no, no. no. Oh. He'll go like, rare. <laughs> It's just like it sounds like a cat. Well, he says queef a lot too. I, yeah. I haven't quite figured that out. I'm waiting for it to find so out where funny. it is in the special because but it, but he, he is not, throws he, it. Yeah, he's not. He's not putting it on, man. He's uh It's his personality. He is like that, and uh, it's it's. I do like that with comedy. I've been thinking about it a lot, but I think when people are honestly themselves, sure, I think that's like that's that's the goal. That's like that's the hard thing that you to find think. your stride within your own personality. Yeah, find you. you yeah, know, I mean those. Joey Diaz is a great example of that. Mm-hmm. That is who he is. Do you know it's a stage name, Joey Diaz? Uh, no. Yeah, his real name is Joseph Diaz. A lot of people <laughs> don't. Of a no bitch. one likes when I do that joke. <laughs> I won't stop doing it. Yeah, that's uh, it's a great uh, <laughs> it's a great uh, misdirect. Uh, a great misdirect that requires another drink. So, Ooh. Uh, have you guys ever do scotch? I do. So this is not. I, I don't know the difference on any of this stuff. I, I got to tell you, like I'm like, booze, cool. Yeah, he's a he, <clears throat> results oriented. Sure. Yeah. So this is. Uh, <laughs> is that a stage name? <laughs> <laughs> results oriented. Well, you can't say uh, orient anymore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely can't. Definitely can't. Don't get, don't get canceled. Oh, I'm so, sorry. I forgot you went to China once. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, you got me. I'm giving you a touch here. This is Amroot. So Amroot okay, cool. is actually cool. Indian whiskey, but it's made. Ew, it tastes gross. a lot like Scotch. Mm. One of the. I mean, arguably. They are a sponsor of the show, but arguably, oh really? Arguably, the the best Indian single malt out there. But uh, I thought I was the best Indian single malt. This is this is peated, so it's going to have some smokiness. Ooh. If you're not a big fan of peat, what does that you mean? May not peated. Like it. it means the, it's made from barley and okay. So, on Isla, mm-hmm. there's a small island, a small island off the coast of Scotland. There's basically no trees. Lumber is not something that oh, is wow. quite easy to come around. So mm-hmm. for hundreds of years, the way that they would keep their homes warm was by cutting into peat bogs. Now, peat bogs essentially are these landlocked areas of grass. And as the grass dies, it doesn't fully decompose before new grass sprouts up. Mm-hmm. So hundreds of years. If you were to cut into a peat bog 12 inches down, mm-hmm. that's a, I always forget if it's 100 years or 1,000 years. Of, of actual decomposing matter. And when you cut it out of the ground, you lay it out to dry to mm-hmm. get all the moisture out, and then it creates a, a log of dirt that is extremely flammable. So for hundreds of years, they were keeping their homes warm by lighting basically dirt, flammable dirt. Holy and crap. Whenever they would distill whiskey, they would basically cook the barley uh-huh. using these instead of firewood, and it creates a smoky... Almost a barbecue smelling cool, cool, spirit. Cool, yeah. So if so you smell this, so interesting. If you smell this, you can smell almost like band aids, iodine, and that's that's the oh yeah, that's the it, it has a medical smell. Correct. That is. Do you see how old I got? I have to like yeah. lean into the mic like I'm ninety, <laughs> like an like an old dad that doesn't know how to use a phone. Mm. Some popular brands now. Now there's a whole section of whiskey wow. drinkers who are obsessed with this. I'm one of these people. They're really? Called, yeah, peat heads. Uh, They're Lef- called peat heads. Peat heads. Yeah, Lafroy. <laughs> <laughs> Lefroy, Ardbeg. Uh, there's a bunch of single malt Scotch producers who readily uh, smoke their their barley uh, that create this. And it may sound odd. It may seem unappealing to many. <laughs> oh my no. god! No. Holy crap! My, but, my, my fiance hates it. Yeah. But, once you, but act, I, I like it. Once you oh, acclimate gosh. to it, it's fantastic. <clears throat> 
It's oh fantastic. My God, that was so I, heavy. I like it. I like it a, a lot on a on a penicillin. Sure, you get a floater of this stuff. Th- this does it. feel like if you're sick, what a doctor would prescribe. Um, a good friend of mine, a friend of the show, Alan Denny. Holy Denny's. crap! Galveston Island Cigar Company talks about how it tastes like if you were to pour iodine on a hospital floor mm-hmm. and then mop it up and then wring that into a glass. Oh my God, that's funny. Uh, that's it, really funny. It's the most unappealing, descripting whiskey, but also the most once you. Once you acquire a taste for it, I was gonna say acquire. And I, it's when fantastic. I think of that, our friend Zach Dixon has this great used to have this great joke about uh, grapefruit, Acqui- the acquired taste, which is just like it, just forcing your, just admit that it's shitty, just you know. <laughs> but you're like, no, it's an acquired. <laughs> it's like, no, you, you have it's shitty <laughs> and you like it. Um, I, yeah, I so I kind of the, I kind of think all alcohol is ultimately an acquired taste. Yeah. I, 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 I no one, a, no I one wants on to that, drink. It's, yeah, it's just like alcohol. the first time you try it as a kid, you're like, this is disgusting. As a kid, or when I was a legal adult, is now I'm just. I'll tell you, in high school, I hated I hated doing beer no. chugs, but you do enough of them, you're like. Oh yeah, I get what. Uh, the, the thing is, I think you associate it with the positive effects from it, and I mean, totally I, also agree. though, like I mean, spicy agree. food is an acquired taste, but it's sure. that Ooh. it's that every. At, Every that that's kind of what makes people people. Whereas an animal will try something to stay away from it. We yeah. have the conscious power of will to actually we'll keep trying something. Insist. Good stuff. Yeah, that's, and that's we'll, fair. We'll, that's we'll fair. figure that's out fair. how to like it. We uh-huh. rewire our brains through conditioning. It. You're just describing marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no I animal will, would. Get I married. like this. I'm happy. I'm doing this. Sure, this sure. is a good decision. Then why are you? Cry- why are there tears coming out of your face? Your face is smiling. But marriage, you're the crying. ultimate acquired taste. <laughs> My wife is great. She loves me. Uh, this is a good home. Don't don't resent her and the kids for ruining my life. I'm happy I did these things. And then you drink this shit. We, we were talking about how Zod's not in relationships earlier. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> What's the longest? You've been in it seven years. What's the longest relationship you've had in that Six seven years? Six months. Six months? That's pretty good. Six months in high school. <laughs> yeah. Before comedy. I was also in high school. I always have to say that. Oh. That. <laughs> She's not, you know. But. I, Mark Norman told that joke recently on an interview. He said... Uh, he goes, how are we judging Jimmy Fallon for what he did 20 years ago? 20 years ago, I was banging 16-year-olds. I was also 16. But... <laughs> That's so funny. God, you really do remind me of Mark Norman. <laughs> I'm telling you, I get it all the time. Have you met him before? Yeah. He was actually one of the first uh, first people I ever featured for at the, uh, at the now defunct Joke Joint Comedy Showcase and defensive driving and old shithole. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's what we were talking about before you got here is I didn't know that place went out of business, but I knew that towards the end they were leaning heavily on the defensive driving portion of that. Yeah, <laughs> like that was, as every good comedy club should. It was in a great spot. I don't, it, I don't know, know why. I mean, it's, it, it used it, to be, I, I will say, like, to, to its uh, – a couple things, I, I, like, on, on a real note was, first of all, that place, uh, back when Danny Martinez owned it, from what I hear from uh, older comics, veteran comics – was a what they call a dojo. It, uh, Danny Martinez was apparently very good at honing new talent, and that place was the home of people like Mo Amer, who has a Netflix special right now, who is uh, Danny Martinez's daughter's his wife, and he spent a lot of time like like that place was once very well notable known. for yeah. for bringing up uh, and giving a, a home. Isn't that to crazy comedians. how that happens? Yeah, there's a few. And the old the old the the current the previous owner after daniel like, like the one that can uh it did go down that sucks you know they they did give me some of my first future spots i think our relationship went a little bit sour near the end but i uh i don't ever wish you know uh that a club to go under yeah man it's you Especially know like it might not have worked city. for me so much near the end and uh there's a lot of things i, I do wish that they did correctly and we would try to, to i feel like push in that right direction but you can't you, bring a horse to water or whatever you know that that'll sure work. but it's one of those things it's like i don't i don't actually wish that i do have problems with stuff uh yeah, i'm a comic i'm gonna make fun of it but i don't want anybody to sure you know lose their business yeah. or go <clears> and like you're getting that fourth largest city i mean there, there's plenty there's plenty of room in the city for great comedy, comedy places. scenes yeah dallas has like seven clubs at the height of <laughs> the like late 80s comedy heyday in houston there was something like 17 Medicine. clubs i think so I mean the yeah. the idea that that there were two classic comedy clubs when mm-hmm. we opened. So then I mean I, I, we're not exactly a comedy club, but as a comedy first venue, you wouldn't say that. Be, you wouldn't say you were a comedy club. I mean, again, we're also listed as dive bar on Google Maps. But well, here's, it's when like you think of comedy club, venue. I think what, what you think of is um, 
a usually a seated table table seating type type thing, where there's a two drink minimum. There's probably food. Sure. Uh, just if you're talking about when you think about the the phrase comedy club, there are certain uh, connotations to it, and you think about yeah, like a table, and you can get food, and there's two drinks required. We just don't meet any of those things. Yeah. So we, I would say we were a comedy venue. Yeah. Also, also I think there's there's a or a live venue. The the way focused. that. <clears throat> The way that shows are run are typically formulaic in a way that yes. we don't match that formula. Totally. We have a lot of shows where it's eight comics doing ten minutes, and we're, we're a lot more like a club. It's like you're going to see that headliner, sure, yeah. feature. There's Showcase a host, style. and that's it. And that's that's more of a traditional comedy club. We still have shows like that, but we have a lot we of, have everything. Yeah, and we we don't again. You know, we have music, but we also have burlesque shows, and we have. Freak shows. Well, there's a lot. There's a lot of different. Like, <laughs> yeah. if it if it's something that's interesting, we probably have it in terms of like a live yeah, the, nightlife type of. Stevie scenario. Blue Eyes guy, I messaged you about. Did you look him up? Uh, yeah, I did briefly. Yeah. So it, it's funny. Uh, so Brendan Schaub and Brian Callen, they came on, and, and then afterwards we went and had dinner at at B and B Butchers. Great, great joint for steaks. Nice. And I, this guy shows up, shorter guy, really cut muscular guys mm-hmm. says his name is stevie i didn't know he was a comic i didn't know he did porn and uh yeah so we have we have a totally nice dinner totally great conversation mm-hmm. uh he couldn't have been a more normal nothing would have indicated anything that, he's that guy yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. and i and they did an interview on the fighter and the kid and he was there with mike catherwood and they were talking about how he was in vegas uh started dating this girl nicholas uh Nicole Aniston, who's a porn I know star. her. Yeah, yeah. I've come to her. <laughs> she's hot. You mean you saw her? Uh, you saw her live? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You might have seen Stevie Blue Eyes. I know. Yeah. I don't know a lot of porn stars, so but I know Nicole Aniston. She started I'm proud dating, of myself. She started dating Stevie. For comedy. <laughs> Jesus. I'm proud of myself. I'm like, hey, I, I jerked off. <laughs> she, st- she started dating Stevie, and, and they got into it together. And yeah, they're yeah. making this crazy amount of money on OnlyFans. And I didn't know any of that. So I just had a, a <laughs> totally pleasant dinner with this guy. Shook his hand. Uh, oh, I gross. talked to him after, and I, I, all I, we somehow we got on the subject subject of the secret group, and we talked oh, wow. about it cool. for half the dinner, and then later he started following me on Instagram. He reached out to me. He's like, "Hey, what was that club again?" And I was like, "He does stand up comedy. He's yeah. a stand up comic who also <clears throat> does porn exclusive exclusively with his." Is he girlfriend. a hot guy? I mean, he's, is I would he an say, attractive he's person? An attractive guy, or is it like Ron Jerry? You know, like if you've like, seen oh, something that Cole Anderson's in, been in, in the last year, uh-huh. you've seen uh, Stevie, seen that guy? Stevie Blue Eyes. Is oh, now I want to meet that. Yeah. Fucking... So he's been touring with Brian Callen and and, and uh, oh, he's um, touring with them. Yeah, touring That's with them. Brian rad. Callen, Brendan Schaub, and this guy Malik Malik Bazil Bazil. Uh-huh. Uh, anyways. It's got you, you got to have a bunch of stories if you're a porn star and a comedian. Yes, yeah, I mean, St- like, Stevie Blue Eyes, man. He, he's uh, he couldn't have been a nicer guy. You would never guess he does porn. And then I was like, all right, I gotta like at least see what like, I've seen his stand up. I might as well see what his other <laughs> body checked works. out his I'll, tape. Check, I'll just take a look real quick. That's, that's really funny. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just imagine I just imagine him watching comedy and jerking off of the comedy tape. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the opposite yeah. of the. Yeah, so I, I told him, he, and he said, he goes, I really want to come check out. Next time I'm in town, I want to come check out uh, the secret group. I said, dude, you should. And he, it, he was great, it. man. He was great. And his stand-up comedy doesn't address what the other job. No way. Yeah, There's yeah. no porn. You the... think he would discuss it. I had no clue. My buddy Charles, Justice, was like, hey, that's Stevie. I love Charles. Charles was like, that's Stevie Blue Eyes. He does porn. I was like, no, he doesn't. And he was like, yeah, he does. And so I'm sitting there. I'm dude, like, oh, the I have another margarita. And I'm looking up. You know, the fact he doesn't address it is crazy. You're telling me you're yeah. moonlighting? He you're doesn't address it career. and, and kills. He killed. He did so good at the Houston that's Improv. That's amazing. And uh, oh my God. to me, I just found him to be incredibly fascinating. Uh, we, we bonded as humans, mm-hmm. not knowing, not being caught up on this thing that he does. Yeah. And, uh, and then his stand-up didn't address it. Uh, it, he he's great. That's I, awesome. I, I mean, That's so, so cool. I reached out to you and Andrew. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, you guys yeah. got to you know. check out the Stevie Blue Eyes guy. You look like you're wearing makeup. I don't know. We're running out of time. So let's <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, my, another. My skin is just glowing. <laughs> All right, last pour is this wow. 1930s cherry brandy covered in mold. That is so such a cool luckily, bottle. Luckily, the inside of the bottle is not covered not in mold. Not covered in mold. Uh, the cork is in there endlessly. So Dude. this is cherry brandy made from cherries. Holy crap syrupy as well it does look so cool like i'm gonna taint my glass here 
it feels like something that would be like if you ever if you ever had, like done theater and like done like an old play it feels like a, it feels like a prop yeah that would be like on an, an like old, in an old saloon or yeah, old, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, i don't even believe it's real and yeah it, this is why you keep backup corks because anything older uh-huh. especially like old bourbon because the alcohol content was so high it would yeah. eat the way at these corks so it's it, always save your corks and put them in a fishbowl or something because you'll, you'll find a use for them but this is i picked this up at auction overseas oh, shit. in italy he was in Italy. You picked it up at auction? You go to auctions? Oh, yeah. That's so cool. How, how much did you pay for this? Uh, it was part of a lot. Oh, my God. And I don't want to say how much I paid for that lot. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you off air. I mean. Oh, I want to know I just want to know. <laughs> as soon as you said you can't tell it, me, now I want to know. It's relatively more affordable than you think, than like some old bourbons go for thousands of dollars. It uh-huh. wasn't thousands of dollars, but it was. It was up there. Hundreds of dollars. Hundreds <laughs> of thousands of if it was yen, it would be tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. Yeah. I wish I had that sound bite. Oh, oh that's, that's delicious. delicious. <laughs> It'd be like a text like, message it's, notification. It's, it's tart. It's like it's tart. It tastes like cherries. <laughs> it's syrupy. It's delicious. It's fantastic. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't like the way it smells. I picked up a, well, most it of them. You're not going to like that. It tastes better than it smells. Yeah, I, I picked up a couple at auction, and I, I we poured one at the social. We poured a whole. Oh, one. that is good. Uh, you can chugging them down shit i don't yeah it's okay. i don't know how to drink you like, can chug no no judgment i just i don't i fuck damn it <laughs> i fuck I, <laughs> hey. I'm sorry i know he just has to mark every time yeah right now. <laughs> i keep forgetting i yeah i didn't i i don't do tastings a lot so it's okay my natural reaction with alcohol is to, is to, to knock it back that's part of the something i'm trying to instill keep in my for, daughters I'm forgetting we have so many bottles at the house. I want my kids to understand that the yeah. one evil in drinking, I, I condone drinking. I love it. Mm-hmm. My, the one evil in drinking is shots. It's something that if I'm I learning were, that, dude. If I were to I open a bar, that. some bars will ban uh, vodkas. Like they want to be more respectable and have good whiskey or mm. good gin or good because vodka basically uh, up until recently, according to the TTB, vodka was defined as something that was tasteless and odorless. And vodka would basically, when you distill whiskey, Mm -hmm. you stop at a certain point. So it still has tons of flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With vodka, you burn the shit out of it until it tastes like nothing. Rubbing alcohol. So vodka, in its fundamental core, is garbage. It's just to get you drunk. And if I were to open a bar, I wouldn't ban vodka. I'd ban shots. Uh, Shots, I think, are just so reckless. That's the whole, yeah, you're you're not enjoying the alcohol. You're uh you're, you're drinking to get drunk. Yeah. Uh, do you, do, you, do you eat your food real slowly? Uh, no, I drink. I eat food quite fastly. Yeah. That'd be. But there's a there's a middle ground. You can drink pretty fast. I'd be okay with people chugging a beer before I would be taking three shots of something called sex on the butthole or whatever the. I mean, I don't know. We make some pretty good shots. <laughs> so you're, 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 man. You know what? Uh, I'll tell you uh, to find the the middle ground, which is I don't. Uh, I'm starting to learn that the the pure alcohol shots. Uh, easy way to ruin your night, but the mixed shots, uh, where they're like yeah, flavored, those, those, and those are actually kind of weaker. That's a little different, yeah, but yeah, also yeah. Uh, they're enjoyable. Like it took <clears> me a while. Like you know, like when you're young, like uh, you're told, like uh, you know, don't get like. There's this whole thing about like not enjoying like fruity drinks or whatever. A lot of you sugar, know? yeah. I don't we like we also we have a we have a shot and it's an orange cream. It's got Bailey's and orange juice. Oh, that's good. So you shake it, and then you're supposed to shoot it. If it was a drink, you would see it curdle over the five mm-hmm. minutes that it took for you to drink. It separates, so you're like, yeah, yeah but, it, but I mean, so that's But some of the mixed shots I do, I do and enjoy. Kinda, and I mean, it coats your mouth. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. But well, yeah. I think I was there <clears throat> uh, last Tuesday. I think there was, you had a couple of shots that actually sounded pretty good. There's a peanut butter one, I think. Yeah, yeah it's just, and that's just a, it's a peanut butter whiskey. I tried for the, I tried for the first time ball, in Chicago. Screwball's screw ball. garbage. You don't it's like it? didn't like it? I hate it. It's not screwball. It's it's. Tastes like George Costanza. <clears throat> I don't know. The, the one that it is, it, this, this one, it actually tastes more caramelly than sure. peanut, butter-y, uh, peanut buttery. Mm. I can't remember the name of it, mm-hmm. but it's that and then like a drop of grape pucker. Um, well, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I tried it for the first time in Chicago and uh, I loved it too much. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, where it, Screwball. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Ryan McGee said this joke about uh, edibles, uh, f- forgetting that. Like when they make edibles into uh, desserts, like Rice Krispie treats, yeah, you forget that they're still drugs. Like you're just enjoying it as a dessert, but you sure. forget that's how I felt with the shots. Where I was like, "Oh, this is great!" I kept mm, taking them, but yeah. I was like, "Oh, this is alcohol." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm forgetting that that you're gonna be shit faced. And yeah, I in took 20 six minutes. of those, six of those peanut butter. God, 
Well, speaking of uh, traveling, you got some upcoming dates? Anything you want to promote? Um, just uh, improv this weekend with with uh, Mark Norman. Um, this has actually been my first weekend back of full comedy, and uh, everything else is sort of tentative right now. I mean, I have some stuff that's like, I just don't know the details of it. Sure. I think all comics you should bring a bad to, idea back. I'm tr- I want to do that. I have a show called Bad Idea, which is on the patio of the club. It's a great name, by the way. Thanks for used for <laughs> you can use that for a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. They, we usually have free pizza on the show. Uh, Pay what you can. It has like, comics from usually all over Texas and the country. And uh, it's third Friday of the month. And you know what? I think we'll probably bring it back in July. Yeah, I hope so. Um, it's so we've been trying to follow social distancing and regulations yeah. as best <clears throat> as we can. We've, we've, but, I mean, honestly, the the comedy shows at the club have been have been pretty well attended, even mm-hmm. during the week. Yeah, and, and we have, pretty spaced apart. I was just there, and yeah. nobody was within a few feet of each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. which, you know, in... And because we're supposed to serve people at the tables, according to Greg Abbott, so we actually have our bartenders. Governor Hot Wheels, yeah. yeah. Governor Hot Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we, we serve them at the table, and, it, and it, you know people enjoy that. And I think we'll probably keep that even after everything's lifted, because mm-hmm. uh, it, as long as we can serve people while they're watching the show, it, they certainly enjoy not having to get up to get another drink. So, so you cool. know what I do like about Abbott? Is that he show he tells us you, you're breathing in very heavily, I love it. Is it just goes, it, it's just because someone is disabled doesn't mean they're not a dickhead. <laughs> He's the first time where I'm like, dude, I get that like you're handicapped, but also I don't like you. Yeah. I don't like you for the person you are, sure, not because like. Which is the most progressive thing to do? Yeah, it's is to, to hate not, someone. To hate somebody for who they are. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. True quality. Yes, it's, it's real quality. <laughs> now, nowadays, people are so quick <laughs> to dismiss dislike for like. There's a there's a, a recent debate that's come up. Uh, the first ever female master distiller within uh, Kentucky was this young, beautiful woman named Marianne Barnes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she. What an old name, though. She's a yeah. <laughs> She's a very prominent... What are you, an old ghost? Are you haunting the distillery? (laughs) She's a prominent figure in in the progressive state of female movement within the distillation, in Kentucky being what they are. Uh, But there are some people who don't care for her as a person. Yeah. So there's been this ongoing debate of, is it okay to criticize someone... Fuck yeah, it is. ...for who she is... (laughs) Yeah. Despite of who she is. Yes, right? totally. I, so it's not a slight on females being involved within distillation. Mm-hmm. It's a judgment of an individual person. And the instinct, the critical thinking mind right. would say, yes, you should be able to judge her mm-hmm. and give her critical feedback and not like her as a person yeah, so. without it being about feminism or anti-female. Yeah. And that is what I think we are mostly dealing with in today's society is the differentiation, our instinct. Most people are also scared to speak out because they don't um, they they don't want to be looked at as someone that got lumped into someone that hates feminism, or sure. racial equality, or you know, whatever the thing is. They they don't want to if they say anything, then that's that's a dissenting opinion. Sure, that they might be looked at as like. Oh, you know, and it's a like, chauvinist, or yeah, and it's yeah, like dude, speak or, out because when you're not doing that, what you're doing is you're, you're becoming part of the problem. In my opinion, I was like, just fucking say, you're also ha- have a backbone, retarding say something. progress. Yes, yeah, and that's a word that we're not going to get into. But you're progress? also inhibiting, right. inhibiting progress. <laughs> and, and I'll say this, and then we can wrap it up and, and we'll go. But the 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 problem you run into, the thing that inhibits progress as a society, yeah. in my opinion, is when just because something reminds you of something offensive. Mm-hmm. doesn't mean it's specifically that thing that thing yeah, yeah right yeah. so just because that's you're, like that's like hating a woman because she reminds you of your ex-wife <laughs> it's like right. well, she might be a totally different person <laughs> right it, if you maybe do, i want to get married i've brought it up like three <laughs> times <laughs> it starts crying <laughs> no it, it, if you do not like an individual person a face of of some movement mm-hmm. uh, as a person then you should be able to say that i don't like that person totally. without, just because it reminds you of in other times that you've criticized or people have criticized females as a whole doesn't mean that that's what they're doing. Language is about intention. So uh, yeah, it's the one thing that's missing right now is intention and context. We're not listening to it. We're only listening to buzzwords. We're buzzwords. Great one. Yeah, and then we're and then we're. Uh, I hate the buzz. <laughs> and then we're reaming people thing. out you, for you it. You used to love it as a kid, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, Rod Ryan. <laughs> it's never changed. But yeah, know? we're we're um, a lot of people are. I feel like also like younger people. Uh, that are coming up are 
it's not so much politically correct. It's like you're missing the point of political. Like you should be politically correct. Sure. You should want to change your language to match the times. You should want to progress and make sure that your thoughts uh, match exactly what you're saying. You want to get that as close as possible. But if you're only looking at um, one side of it and you're taking out context, you're taking out intention, you, you miss the whole damn sure. point of it. You miss the whole thing. thing. Yeah, and now we are back to where we were at the beginning. You, you, we've made no progress, and now you are mm-hmm. uh, you're doing more harm to the idea of progression than you are. Because now no one wants to say anything. Because what if they say it wrong? Sure. What if they, what if their opinion is not? You know, you want to go groupthink, and so you're scared. It's like don't be scared. Speak. you de- speak, 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 speak. Definitely in Saturday, huh? What's up? You'll come back on with Mark Norman totally, Saturday. Totally. I yeah. would love because I know he's got a lot of thoughts on this. I would yeah, love yeah. to dig deeper into this conversation. Totally, absolutely. Uh, and you and Mark, I think, would be a great conversation into into where we are in in terminology. So for sure. Um, thanks so much for coming on, Mr. Brandow. Thanks, bud. That was fun. Right, thanks that was so really much. Fun. And uh, yeah, cheers, guys. Thanks. Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more.